Okay, so we are live again to another class on uh, every Wednesday, and I thought, uh, as people keep on joining in, today we will discuss or try to apply some financial modeling skills uh, to a very basic, uh, you could say, an application. Which uh, we we tend to think that financial modeling application has to be very complicated, but in reality, it does not have to be. Right? It can be as uh, simple as applying to find out uh, which mutual fund to take because at the end financial modeling is nothing but a decision making tool right and uh, the decision could be maybe selecting uh, a mutual fund from a list of so many mutual funds uh, it could also be uh, you know deciding on the portfolio allocation right so financial modeling can have n number of uh, applications, but today I thought that we will talk uh, based on selecting the weightage between, uh, let's say, three asset classes, right? Uh, so we're going to be talking about equity alternative investment, which is something like gold and bonds, right? So uh, if you do not have the file, uh, I have already posted in the chat box, you can just click on that link. And please do let me know if you can actually access that link or not. And uh, because the last time I believe uh, one of uh, the students was not able to actually uh, access the link. So do let me know. I've put it in the description as well as the chat box. So make sure that you can just give it a try. Uh, the file name is mutual fund analysis using financial modeling. Okay. So just get hold of that template because that is the template uh, that we're going to be referring to. Uh, in this class okay so let's start with the discussion so uh you know i i took up the data i mean this template basically i created uh considering that uh you might be new to financial modeling right so at in in real life you really don't get a template right so you have to download your own data you have to sometimes the data is not in the correct structure so without wasting much time and without uh, spending too much time on shitting and chatting, let's start with the file, okay? So just a bit of an advice or a disclaimer, I would say, is uh, this file can sound or look a little more complicated, but it's uh, not as complicated as it may sound, okay? Or it may look. So what we have here, we have here gold ETF. So we've got exchange traded funds available for us in India through which we can actually get exposure to alternative investments. Okay. Uh, alternative investments is anything which is not traditional investment, right? So gold would qualify as one of the biggest alternative investment available. Real estate is also one of the alternative investment. Unfortunately, real estate does not get traded. So we can't take exposure into real estate unless and until we buy real estate, right? Which becomes a big problem. But most of the advantage of real estate, uh, which is uh, advantage of real estate, which is basically a negative correlation with uh, equity and bonds can be availed by investing into gold ETF. So I've taken an Axis gold ETF out here. Okay. Uh, so uh, in case you have joined in just recently, just uh, go and download the template. This will be fruitful only if you actually refer this template. So, and it's then the chat box as well as uh, the description. So make sure to download it from there. And uh, I've got ETF. So I've downloaded this ETF data. Now I have normalized this data because uh, if you look at the original data set, which I have put in here, uh, there was a split of the price on the NAV uh, in 2020. So I had to normalize the data. I will not get into normalization, but just maybe some in a different class, maybe I can discuss normalization. But I just consider that since if a stock becomes, let's say 400, 500, and the company might decide to just split the stock in the same way, it can also happen for mutual fund. And in that cases, what you need to do is normalize the data, right? Which is to bring the effect back historically. So I've done that and I've got ETF data out here, which is Axis. Uh, gold ETF. Then I've got SBI Magnum long-term government bond fund. So SBI Magnum basically invests in long-term government bonds. And I've got Franklin Blue Chip here. So I've selected, you know, one of the most, you can say, common uh, 
mutual funds out here in their category all right uh, and what we have taken an assumption out here is that let's say we invest in an sip of about 25000 between 2nd january 2018 and we rede redeem the entire investment on 30th december 20 so we're basically talking about 3 years right so we want to test it out uh, first that under these conditions which is 10% gold investment 80% equity investment and 20% bond allocation what would the returns be and at the end if you remember from the previous class we could use sensitivity analysis to check from a risk angle so the the file can be a little intimidating so initially we are just talking about returns so this is the return analysis we will do this at the end of this class right uh, and then we later on get into the more complex calculations of risk which is brought on okay so these might be things which you might have not heard even if uh, you might have done qualifications like cfa because these are just practical industry terminologies which people generally don't know all right so what we're going to do is we're going to start the calculation so first and foremost what we're going to do is since we have the nav prices out here right so we can start calculating the percentage change of these prices so that we are able to calculate what happens to our investment okay so i'm going to start by calculating the percentage change so percentage change is what today's price which is uh, you know the present day's price divided by the previous day's price minus 1 so that gives us the percentage change right and i replicate that across three funds etf sbi and franklin right and if we want to replicate this formula all at once for all the data points so we have how many we have got about i believe 36 months yes so we have put, we have about 36 months so if you want to replicate the formula of today's price divided by last day's price minus 1 we will just take the entire three cells and we will double click on this right uh okay so i think there is a merge cell in between so what i'll do is i'll just create a space between them so that we can actually double click there okay there you go now we can do it so i'm going to select these three cells and double click so my percentage change calculation gets replicated across cells all at once all right so now once we have uh, you know the percentage by which the rate actually of the asset is changing now we can apply it for investment now remember we are doing an sip and we are not doing constant capital which means that we are not investing once we are investing monthly right so remember if we want to use sensitivity analysis we have to make sure that we are linking stuffs all right so if you see here etf then i need to select 10% and multiply that with the total investment so so that i get a constant linked value in each cell and i'm going to keep it as negative because we want to calculate returns and if we want to calculate returns we have to make sure that the signs are appropriate for return calculations which is nothing but uh negative right so negative will show as cash outflow and positive will show as cash inflow all right so that's negative out here and i drag this across to the right okay now i need to just do a slight change in the formula and make sure that the cell can move to the right so i've changed it to a row dollar sign out here i'm going to copy this to the right there you go okay so that means etf about 2500 sbi about 20000 and franklin about 2500 again all right again select these three cells double click so that your entire cash flow gets calculated all at once so there you go and we will just make sure that these are deleted yeah so our last investment is on 2nd of december and 3rd of december we basically are going to redeem right so there you go that's our cash flow you will understand why we have put it this way why we have kept it as negative uh when we do the final calculations now we sum it up so that we are also able to calculate returns at a portfolio level so summed up etf uh, sbi and franklin together 
and again double click there you go so 25000 investment every month now now this is where things become interesting like how do you calculate portfolio value or the value of that investment every month uh manually right so the way to do it is to first change the sign of 25 uh i mean 2500 so imagine you have to imagine that 2500 is actually getting into a bank account okay or or let's say you invested from your bank account so it's negative and then it gets credited into your mutual fund account it so it becomes positive so it became positive out here right so minus minus will cancel each other out and it got deposited into your mutual fund account right uh, 2500 right now what happens in the next period in the next period this 2500 will increase with the percentage change of the etf that we calculated there you go right so 2500 increases with 3% but we also do another investment of 2500 because we are constantly repeating the investment every month right so if you put a negative that 2500 gets added out here right so there you go so it's 5077 now we don't have to do it for all of them because we can just uh basically replicate that across right so it got replicated out here it got replicated out here it got replicated out here and it should ideally replicate out here as well let's see oops yeah so there is some problem here so 25000 into 1 plus oops sorry we don't have to do that we actually just want to sum it up We summed it up here, copied it down, and now just double click. There you go. So this is the easy part. I mean, this is just you're just finding value, right? But any any decision making using financial modeling, the main aspect is not this calculation. It's about taking a decision. So you have to decide on the decision making parameters first. All right. So once we have the capital, so you can see that. every month we are investing on that sip and finally at the end our total capital reaches to about 10 lakhs in 3 years right uh now let's start by first calculating the returns for each of these funds okay so so that we are able to see the column what i'll do is i'll just freeze the pane here okay so that we can see the headers yeah now it's better now let's calculate the returns for starting with the etf fund okay so we're going to link the final amount of etf which is 117572 right so now you'll understand why we created this h column because negative is investment positive is inflow so that's the only place where you can use the xirr calculation right and we do the same for sbi and franklin and in fact we can also do it for total capital right so etf sbi franklin total and now we use the xirr function so xirr start by selecting the values which is the entire cash flow including the redemption okay and at the same time select the start date to the end date the end date is 3 december now since we can replicate this calculation to the right what we can do is we can just keep this dates as constant because dates are not going to change really right so i have kept the dates as constant and close it so the value is not zero it's just that the value is in percentage so hence it is appearing to be zero and <clears throat> copy that across for three and in fact also for the total portfolio returns okay so there you have your returns to start with okay but as i said again returns are not the only decision making parameters ever in finance it is also the risk right so we're going to get into risk also but hopefully you understood how to calculate returns uh first for the funds right so at a portfolio level we have 13% return at franklin level we have about 11% which is a blue chip fund sbi is basically the government bond fund which has given you 12% which is actually if you see it's higher than even the equity fund in this 3 years period <clears throat> and the best outperforming asset seems to be the gold fund right now let's look at 
the various risk parameters okay so we're going to start calculating the risk parameters for each of these funds and the usual industry discussion on risk is basically on standard deviation uh so we're going to calculate standard deviation the only problem with standard deviation is that most of us or i would say most of us cannot, cannot interpret standard deviation very well because we do not understand what is standard deviation right uh, and that's what perplexes me a lot because the industry tends to use standard deviation based risk measure to show that your mutual fund is less risky or higher risky but unfortunately uh if when i say there's a 25% standard deviation uh people really can't intuitively think what it means to them in terms of risk right so anyways so we calculated standard deviation dot s and we selected all the values so this basically gives us the monthly standard deviation but we are interested in an annualized standard deviation so the way you annualize this is just multiply this with the square root of 12 okay 12 months so if you had a daily standard deviation and if you wanted to convert the daily standard deviation into an annual standard deviation then you would have done square root of 240 but since we are talking about monthly hence we can just do a multiplication of 12 square root of 12 right so there you go that's your standard deviation so about 13% right and sbi has a 25% standard deviation and franklin has about 23% standard deviation now this is what most of the mutual fund documents will have something called as the sharp right so we're going to calculate sharp but for that we will have to assume a risk free rate so let's assume that the risk free rate is about 5% okay and let's go ahead and calculate the sharp for the three funds majorly it will make sense for i mean uh etf will not make much sense because etf does not have any active management so it might make sense for sbi and franklin right because etf is just replicating the gold prices but nevertheless we will just still calculate it which is the return on the asset minus the risk free rate divided by and and we'll just fix the standard deviation uh, risk free rate okay and divided by the standard deviation oops sorry i selected the wrong value returns minus risk free rate divided by standard deviation So usually sharp is spoken in terms of a fraction. So there you go. It's nothing but a percentage actually. You know, you're just trying to find out uh, what are the excess returns. So if you see 19% minus 5%, so 5% is risk free. So even if you are not taken any risk, you would have still got 19 minus. I mean, you would have still got 5%. So the excess return, which is 19 minus 5, which is about 14%. and you compare that with how much risk you are taking so the risk is standard deviation 13% so you divide that and you say that okay what is it in terms of percentage so all it says is that you know gold is doing amazing right but if you talk about sbi out here so the excess return is uh, 12% minus 5 which is about 7% right and 7% when you divide it by the standard deviation of 25% it just tells in proportionate to one standard deviation of risk how much returns are you getting back right so the sharp is not very attractive out here right because uh, it's just for 0.3% uh, for 1% of standard deviation risk that you are taking this is the problem with this measure at the first place right because really difficult to intuitively understand what it means for me right anyways so we have still calculated the sharp right uh, and now let's come to some interesting risk calculation which is what i like to use and uh, most of the international community of i mean fund management will always talk about drawdown so drawdown is nothing but calculating by how much does the capital drop now that is something that we are interested in we and most of the investors are mostly interested you know in how much does the capital come down right and that's what we want to calculate out here even though we have sip but does not matter we can still calculate drawdown so the formula can be a little more i mean can sound a little more confusing but this is how it goes okay so today's value of capital minus 
maximum of the value till date so what you are trying to find out is the difference between today's capital value minus what was the highest capital value between when it started till date right so that will give you whether you are in net net positive from the highest point or you are lowest now i don't know if that will make sense because usually drawdown is a little difficult to explain in terms of calculation very easy in terms of explanation so you know it's like sharp sharp is easy to calculate but very difficult to interpret drawdown is difficult to calculate but very easy to interpret anyways right now get the calculation if you're getting the calculation you will be able to understand it at a later date okay so i'm going to fix 08 all right so because it's still date so there you go 09 so that's 09 basically means that today is it today oh sorry yeah 09 is today yes 09 so today's portfolio minus maximum of the portfolio value till date okay and then we divide this by the maximum portfolio value till date let me get rid of this dot and do the same thing here so now this dividing this basically gives us a percentage which is basically nothing but drawdown don't get fooled by zero it just means that it's no drawdown till date because you can clearly see that your portfolio value is higher uh then your initial capital so drawdown will only appear when you first get to a highest point and then the capital drops so you will see a drawdown out here see there you go can you see that 22% drawdown so which means that the highest point till date must be some value and from there so i believe the highest point was 7 lakh 90000 and then there was a drop because i think the equity market crashed crashed on uh, the third i mean somewhere in, in may and that gave us the 22% drawdown all right so there you go that's our drawdown and if you want to make this positive so you can just put an absolute function in front of this absolute so you can get rid of that sign okay you can maybe play back later on to get this calculation right but very interesting in terms of actual interpretation so you can see that the highest drawdown at a portfolio level at this allocation which is 80% equity 10% bonds and 10% alternative investment is 22% okay now we come to some interesting calculations of risk okay so we can see out here that returned equity versus bonds so what we are going to do here is we want to check what is returns would be if we change the allocation of equity versus bonds keeping alternative investments constant okay so alternative investments would be at let's say 10% and we will try to see what the returns will look like so this is where we're going to use data table okay and this is nothing but the irr of the total portfolio so which we have linked which you going to replicate out here okay so there you go data uh what if analysis data table and now we take the row input so row input is nothing but the equity allocation so we'll select equity from there on the top and column input is nothing but bonds so we're going to select bonds and press okay so there you go so all it tells us is that under different allocation so the yellow marks are the ones which are actually possible uh, all the other cells are actually not possible to allocate right so you can see that as you keep on increasing equity in this time frame your return seems to be improving to about 13.1 so if you take a lower equity allocation then your returns are 11.7% right so lower equity investment is definitely giving you lower returns right uh, that is one thing to conclude from here but i'll tell you what becomes interesting interesting is to see what happens when you do equity versus alternative investment okay now that would probably make you think that is a bond allocation even required okay so if i run the same calculation out here data what if analysis data table and now 
our column row is obviously equity but my column input becomes okay what are we doing here return equity versus alternative so we're going to select alternative which is the 10 percent out here okay and let's press okay now you see what happens under the same allocation if you had let's say gone up to a 20 percent allocation in uh, alternative investment this is actually alternative investment just mistakenly put so if you increase your allocation so if let's say you had an equity allocation of 70 percent and you had a 20 percent allocation of alternative investment and let's say 10 percent was bonds then your return would be 13.7 which i think is already you it's higher than your 13 percent which anyways you're getting right and if you look at same thing for drawdown okay so i'm gonna now link the drawdown as well so let's calculate the portfolio level highest drawdown. There you go. So that's about uh, 22%. Let's see what happens when we change the equity versus bond allocation uh, to the drawdown. Okay, so let's see which will give us the lowest drawdown. So what if analysis data table, row input is equity again and column input is bonds. So you can see uh, current drawdown was about 22%, but when you decreased your allocation towards equity, so if you went to let's say 10% equity and you know 80% uh, bonds and 10% uh, you know 10% would be alternative investment, then your drawdown obviously reduces to 19.3. But as was with, with the return, if you actually use equity versus alternative uh, investment variation, but you kept bond as constant, you will be surprised with the result. So in fact, your drawdown will be the lowest possibly with alternative investments. Okay, so let's see the data table. Row input is your equity. I'm gonna select equity. And column input is gonna be alternative investment, which is the 10% of there. Look at what happens. So if you see, even if you, let's say, increase your allocation towards alternative investments to about 30%, your drawdown significantly decreases, which means your capital risk decreases more with alternative investments than with bonds. Now, that's something to think about. Why is gold giving us more, you know, lesser risk compared to bonds? Because if you see in bonds, if I, you know, go to 70 and 20 and 10 allocation, 70% equity, 20% bonds and 10% alternate, my drawdown is still 21.8. But when I'm going at 70% equity, 30% or let's say 20% bonds and 10% 20% uh, uh, gold and 10% bonds, I have a better risk parameter, 18.4%, right? And possibly even higher returns, in fact, if you try to do that, yeah. See, if you go on, uh, let's say, 70% equity, right, and you go 20% on alternative investments, which is 90, and 10% on bonds, your returns are better than equity, bond, uh, higher ratio, and 10% uh, lower alternative investment ratio, right? So you have to understand what, what, wh why is this happening, right? So a very simple explanation is on correlation. Okay, so bonds and equities still work almost, uh, you can't really say that they have an absolute negative correlation, which means uh, when equity goes down, right, finally equity and bonds both are getting affected by business condition and business cycle. However, if you look at uh, Alternative investments versus equity and bonds. Alternative investments like gold basically is a safe asset. So the safety of the asset finally gives you a negative correlation. That means when equity is going down, the bond is going up, right? Uh, we can actually see this also uh, if we are able to create charts of these, right? Uh, let's see if we are able to create a chart of ETF and SBI together you'll have to just change the chart type 
And what we'll do is we'll try to use this to put this into a secondary axis, okay? So that we are able to see what happens. Now, if you see this chart, right? Now you can see that the SBI is basically nothing but the bond fund, right? And you can see this is the ETF. Now, when the bond values are dropping, right? When bond is not performing, your equity is still performing uh, or your alternative is still performing, right? And if you see the same thing for even, uh, let's say, equity versus alternative, you should get almost a similar chart. So let me show you this. Let me show you ETF and Franklin. Oops. ETF and Franklin. I'm going to change that series chart type to line. Line. And I put this on secondary axis. There you go. Same story, right? If you see when equities are not performing, your bond supports from below, right? Because the negative, I mean, it's a negative correlation. This is what is called negative correlation, right? And if you want to calculate this, you can even calculate this a simple correlation function. And uh, generally you use the percentage change, price change for the calculation purpose. Okay, so I'm going to select, let's say ETF versus Franklin, which is basically an equity fund. Okay. Oops, sorry. I think I selected the wrong array. ETF versus Franklin. So there you go. It's about a negative 0.32 correlation between ETF and Franklin. And if you try to see that between ETF and bond fund, that's about 0 0.06, right? And if you see the correlation between bond and equity, right? Let's try to see that as well. Not really a good diversification tool, is it? So bond and equity are more or less working similar. Because both finally, although does give you some bit of diversification in terms of uh, the risk for the capital, but it does not really give you a lot of uh, diversification in terms of price risk, right? So, and generally we are more concerned about price risk, right? Let's try to see that also in a line chart. So if you try to see bond and Franklin, right? So there you go. SBI almost similar, right? So that's the problem with only taking exposure into bond fund and bond and equity, right? Almost because they almost are working similar. So that's why alternative investments can be useful. Now, I will leave this question to you on concluding after obviously uh, you have probably played back this video maybe six to seven times. Uh, try to conclude what is the, finally, what is your recommendation on the optimum allocation between equity, bonds, and alternative? And I would love to hear your opinion. Do post it on the chat box uh, on what you think should be the calculation. I'll, in fact, I'll just post this file also uh, in the sheet, uh, in the folder so that you can my calculations as well right so i've done that already so if you want to actually check that you can check that as well right so do make sure to uh, tell me what your opinion on the best allocation according to you now this allocation can actually differ because remember there is no perfect allocation because you can never say that this allocation is perfect for everyone because everyone will have a different risk appetite so the way to start and look at this calculation is to see which is the amount of drawdown that you are more comfortable with. And on that drawdown, what is the highest return possible? Right. So if you get that answer again, I'll repeat that again. What drawdown, what drop of capital you are comfortable with? And on that drop of capital, which is drawdown, which is the highest return combination which is available, right? Now, this is just an exercise. In reality, you will have to look at more data. 
maybe about two business cycles. So at least a 10 year data period is what you should actually see to conclude the best allocation, right? So I'll leave that question with you and do let me know what you think about uh, this exercise. And if you have any questions, please do post. And I will see you again next week with another lecture on financial modeling. Bye-bye.